Um, uh, Dr. Bucky is an assistant professor at the Harvard uh, School of Public Health. Uh, her work focuses on the population dynamics of genetically diverse pathogen species such as malaria parasites and meningococcus bacteria. She uses modeling techniques to understand relationships between the evolution of these species and patterns of infection and disease. Okay, thank you. Is there a... Okay, so this isn't going to quickly go on me, is it? No. No, okay. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm interested in malaria transmission and control, um, and I'm going to talk today about a specific application of call data records, uh, which are generated whenever you make a phone call or a text message or top up your phone. Um, and they are um, a useful way to locate uh, individuals and map human travel. And um, increasingly, people are using CDRs to try and understand the dynamics of human populations. And here, uh, this particular project, we're specifically trying to understand how human mobility underlies the transmission of malaria on regional scales. So the nice thing about working on a vector-borne infection is that you can realistically define a regional infection risk. You don't have to worry so much about face-to-face -face contact patterns. <coughs> so um, this is a picture of Kenya. And in the background, in the red and yellow, there is a map generated by the Malaria Atlas Project by Simon Hay and colleagues at Oxford. Simon's in the audience. Um, and it shows the prevalence of malaria in children um, on a spatial resolution of about one kilometer squared. So you can see that uh, malaria is concentrated on the, uh, around Lake Victoria and on the coast. Um, there's patches up, in, up here. And then in the central part of the country, there's really very little malaria transmission. So we have a very well-defined heterogeneous infection risk. And what we're interested in doing is seeing if we can use CDRs to measure the rates of carriage of parasites between regions of different risk. Um, so what we do is this particular approach, we layer on different types of information to try and build up our best picture of population dynamics of, the, um, of Kenya. And so what you have here overlaid onto the malaria risk map, we have satellite imagery that shows the location of settlements across the country. Um, and these maps are generated by Andy Tatum a colleague at the University of Florida. And so in the sort of pale blobs here are the location of settlements across the country. And you can see that they're concentrated in the southern half. Um, and around here is Nairobi. And just to give you an example, here's, um, here's the center of Nairobi as a settlement. And the black dots are where the mobile phone towers are located. So obviously, the cool data records generated by mobile phones um, are going to vary in the spatial resolution they give you and your ability to map movement. So in Nairobi, we can map movements down to a city block. Up in the north, it's much harder, and, and we have a lot more uncertainty about where people are moving to and from. Uh, the good thing is that mobile phone tower density correlates well with population density. So where the people are, we can get pretty good estimates of movement. <clears throat> and I think you know, for a long time, particularly in the developing world, uh, road networks and other proxies for human movement just aren't very accurate. And so being able to get um, very fine resolution data, both temporally and spatially on human movements, is really going to change how we approach control. And so um, the data set that we are working with is actually through a collaboration with Nathan Eagle, who's talking later on today. Um, and we've used the CDRs with a very simple transmission model of malaria based on the Malaria Atlas Project risk assessment to try and separate out the dynamics of human movement and the dynamics of parasite movements. And so uh, I'm not really going to explain exactly how these are generated, um, but this network on the left shows just the population dynamics of people traveling around the country. And it's highly connected and basically everybody travels in and out of Nairobi. So Nairobi is right there in the middle of the country. And I've just um, drawn these schematics to show you um, where the networks are going to lie on the map. <clears throat> They're roughly colored according to malaria transmission. So what you can see is if you just look at human population dynamics, people are traveling in and out of Nairobi and in from the coast. And there's a lot of movement around Lake Victoria. And what we can do then is overlay our risk map onto some of the movement patterns and try and estimate importation rates of parasites between regions. 
And if you do that, uh, then you get a very different type of movement network, which, which becomes a parasite movement network, essentially. And we can try and measure source and sinks and potentially target some of the sinks for regional control programs. So there are two types of, of people in this model. There are residents, so this is when people travel to an area of high endemicity, they, they bring malaria back with them. And then there are visitors, so this is when infected people come to your region and contribute to transmission while they're there. <clears throat> and as I say, this is a very simple transmission model that we've overlaid on these called data records. And what you can see is that the networks are slightly less well connected and they, Nairobi sort of falls out because there's no transmission in Nairobi for the, resi uh, for the residents. And parasites are moving in from the coast and in from Lake Victoria, which is not particularly surprising since that's where transmission occurs. But we can start to quantify what we think the rates of parasite movement are going to be. And then if we look at visitors, because of the vast volumes of traffic into Nairobi, um, what you see is parasites moving into the city. And if you do a back-of-the-envelope calculation about what our expected standing prevalence of parasites in Nairobi should be, it roughly equates to what cross-sectional studies in Nairobi indicate. Because there's no transmission, that's a good way to sort of validate some of the modeling. So I think for general discussion, it might be of interest here, um, something that we worry about and probably people interested in M health applications should worry about is actually who owns phones. Where are they located? Who, you know, where are they distributed? And so um, this is the result of a uh, financial survey, but they asked people in household surveys across the country in different districts, you know, do you own a phone? How often do you use it? How much do you spend on your phone? And we've been analyzing this data um, with colleagues at Kemri, Bob, Noor and, Bob Snow and Abdisalam Noor. And what you can see here is the level of ownership in different districts. So again, in Nairobi and in these highly populated areas, ownership gets up above three quarters of the population. Whereas up in these um, rural areas, sometimes ownership is very low. And this is obviously going to be needed, we need to account for it, both if you're trying to target people and engage with populations for M health applications, but also if you're trying to use CDRs to measure movement. Um, and just to show you a few more points on that, uh, all of these things are correlated with poverty. So this is the by district poverty rate, and you can see how many people own phones by district, and then this is the percentage urban. So up here is Nairobi, and then as we get into the poorer districts, ownership drops down. Similarly, income level, we have to account for the distribution of phones among different income groups if we want to target at-risk populations. Um, and so I think for the general panel discussion, it might be interesting to talk about how we can deal with some of the dis these discrepancies, and maybe they're going away, um, but I think it's important to think about. So um, I want to acknowledge my graduate student, Amy Wesolowski, who's done a lot of the heavy lifting, and um, I'll be interested to hear your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you.